Hi, my name is Alan Folsta. Uh, I'm living at the west coast of Norway, in the fjords of Norway. For 25 years I've been working on Svalbard, working for the governor with search and rescue, uh, for different expedition companies uh, as a tour guide, as a mountain guide, and also been traveling a lot on my own on expeditions on Svalbard. Now I'm sitting in the Luen area, very famous as a cruise destination. I'm sitting in a mountain cabin there. It's snow around me, it's clear, and it's about minus five degrees. I'm sitting outside uh, with my fireplace, and it's just beautiful. I just, if I see up, I can see the stars, uh, and I can see uh, not the northern light yet, but it will come, it will come. What I love most about Svalbard is to sit on the northernmost point looking north in the darkest period of year where you only see the stars, maybe the northern light, you see the ice and you know it's just ice and ocean between you and the North Pole. You know that you are on a place on earth that you are very very alone. It's, uh, I think you feel the quietness that you are uh, so in the nature, that you are in a remote area, that uh, yes, you are alone. It's so beautiful up there. The difference between summer and winter on Svalbard is that when the summer comes, you see all the life wakes up in a very, very limited time of the year. You see the flowers, birds, the life really wakes and during a very, very short period. This is so intense and you see all the life around you and you know that in just some months it will be getting dark and cold like a frozen desert. And what you see then is just the polar bears, seals and uh, the fox who has really adapted to this very, very cold and remote area. Uh, Svalbard has been the best part of my life and the worst part of my life. The best part has been that my kids is uh, born and grown up there. I met uh, my wife there. Most of the friends I still have I met on Svalbard. And we shared a lot of beautiful experience together. But we also had terrible moments. Uh, on Svalbard uh, it's a very very short distance between happiness and big accidents. I've seen friends been killed. I've seen huge catastrophics, like an airplane crashed into a mountain, 152 people killed. I've seen people fall in crevasses, and we have fighting to save their life, and they have died in our arms. And that have been things that I've had with me the rest of my life. When I worked for the governor, I had the responsibility for the search and rescue in the island. And I was leading a team of very competent people and we was sent out in uh, terrible weather on very difficult uh, search and rescue operation. And when we saw the weather forecast during the winter we had to start preparing because we knew that something is going to happen. We knew that when an accident happened we had to be out in the field for days. So the most important we could do was not to get as fast as possible ready, but to have all the right equipment with us. And what we experienced was that we had to first get a proper meal. And what we knew was that we was out for many, many days. So the most important thing was to come to the victim and have the right equipment to save them. It's an easy question to answer if it's bad luck or is, if it's the human error. It's always human error. Of course you can have uh, trouble with the weather from time to time. That may be when you are on the top of the glaciers and are stuck in very, very bad weather on Svalbard. That can be, uh, un uh, you can be very unlucky, but mostly it's human error.
I have had some intense wildlife encounters during my years on Svalbard. I remember uh, some encounters with polar bears that was quite special. We was, uh, we was uh, living in a cabin north on Svalbard called Musamna. And uh, I was there with a friend and uh, we were sleeping. And I heard a polar bear on the roof was trying to get down to us. So he was jumping on the roof. And I was running out to my friend and said, we have a problem, we have a polar bear on the roof. We have to scare him. And he, my friend said, I doesn't matter, I, will, I want to sleep. So he turned around, continued sleeping. So I went to bed. But I couldn't sleep because the polar bear was jumping up and down just above my head. So then I found something to hit back on the roof with. So I hit up with a wooden pole and then he ran off the roof. And I found my gun, went outside and he was standing just outside the door, like three, four meters. And I just instantly fired my gun between his legs and then he ran away and I went to sleep. And then other time we was on a fishing trip on the north side of Svalbard and we had got a lot of fish, we had a nice meal, a good thing to drink and we went to bed and it was a very very small cabin and I wake up in the middle of the night that something was scratching on the door and I told that one of my friends was outside peeing so I just turned around tried to sleep again then the whole door come in Inside the cabin, the polar bear was standing in the cabin. I could touch him with my hands. Luckily, I had my gun under my pillow, took it out and wanted to shoot. And then thought, it's not wise to shoot a polar bear here now, then you get a problem. So we just started knocking in the walls and the polar bear backed out and ran out, run from, uh, run from the cabin. Yeah, we, we have cooperated with the scientists taking samples from the wildlife uh, like the fishes uh, and also uh, seals and they see how pollution in uh, other parts of the world is affecting the wildlife on Svalbard. Uh, you see it in the speck in the meat of the seals or the birds or the polar bears and you know if you are burning something bad in the US you will see it in the Arctic. A very good friend of mine, a scientist, has uh, a theory that Amundsen disappeared on the northeast uh, part of Svalbard. And the reason for that is that a lot of evidence that he, his plane was flying much farther north than they have thought until now. And what they thought is that he has landed up where the balloon from the Italians was crashed and managed to save some of the people on board taking them ashore on the northeast part of Svalbard. And what we are going to do next year is going to go up and search for evidence after Amundsen in the area of the northeast Svalbard. Our plans for getting up to the area where we are going to search for Amundsen is to sail using a sailing boat to get as close as possible. And I think to move with a sailing boat is the best way to explore the Arctic, for sure. And I have also bought my own sailing boat now. And I have an e-bike, I have my skis, and I have my sailing boat, and I'm going to explore Lofoten next spring. One of my reasons to be a guide in the Arctic is to learn people, visitors, about how important it is to protect these areas. The Arctic is the ground zero for climate changes. I've been up there now for 25 years and on my first 12-15 years on Svalbard we couldn't sail around Svalbard in May, June. What we see now is that the, the, the temperature has risen and the climate change is, is affecting this area so bad. So it's so important that people can see and understand that we really, really need to take care of our environment and think about the climate changes.